Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, hey, hello, my name is Lauren. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys all about how you can set up your Etsy photography so that you can increase your sales. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the tips. First off, I think we need to talk a little bit about why photos are so important on Etsy. The photos are one of the first things that people see when they are scrolling through searching for something. So when you head to Etsy.com and you are typing into the search bar looking for that perfect item that you need for a gift or for yourself, you're gonna come up with a ton of different products. But the only things that you're really gonna notice are the photos. So as you're scrolling, you are then getting stopped by those things that spark your interest by how they look typically. This is why photos are so important on Etsy. It is your first impression that you give to a shopper and it is usually the thing that draws them in the most to go and look at your product. And if you can actually get them over to look at your listing of your product and look at your shop, you're gonna be more likely to increase your sales, which is why photos are so, so important when it comes to increasing your sales on Etsy and being successful. So let's talk about how we can improve our photos in order to drive more traffic and sales. The first thing you need to be focusing on is your quality. Your quality is how clear your image is. The picture quality of a phone from say five to seven years ago is not gonna be nearly as clear and crisp as a phone's image from say this year. So the important part about this is thinking about that when you're taking those photos and that you should be trying to have the highest quality that you possibly can. Now there are two options here. First off, you can use a phone or you can use a DSLR camera. These are the two ways that I would go. You can absolutely start out with a phone. It's a great place to get started if you're not ready to invest money into a nice camera or you just don't really wanna learn how to use the camera. However, if you're going to be using a phone, you need to be using the newest phone that you have available to you. Whether that is someone you know, a family member or a friend that would let you borrow it, or if you can actually go and you know get a new phone and make that part of like a business purchase and expense, then that's something that I would highly recommend. Now, if you are ready to invest a little bit of money into your business and really step up that photo quality game, I would highly recommend a DSLR camera. These are these big cameras that people like me use to film YouTube videos and other high quality photos. These are gonna allow you to get some of those really nice blurry backgrounds. They're gonna give you a really crisp quality image and it's gonna be a really high quality photo. This is a camera that I would highly suggest to you if you are looking to get started with one and you want to make that purchase for your business. This is a Canon M50. It is a really great beginner camera. It comes with a lens already with it in this package. This is actually the camera that I use to film all of my YouTube videos. However, I do have a special lens on this video, so you won't get it technically like my video quality here kind of looks, but you can add on different lenses that can really give you that different look that you're going for. However, this is a really great beginner one to start with. I'm gonna link it up here for you guys as well as down below if you wanna go and check it out. If you want that high quality camera look, but maybe you're not ready to invest into that camera until you made a few more sales, you could also look into local camera shops if you have any near you. Typically these camera shops will rent out equipment so you can actually rent out a camera and a lens or just a camera with a basic lens on it and get some photos for your new listings whenever you're available. The second area we need to be focusing in on when it comes to our photos is the quantity. Now, that first photo is the first thing that people see but once they click on your listing, if you don't have any more photos of that product, they're likely going to click off of it and not purchase. Etsy allows you to have up to 10 different photos in your listing and you should be using all of these, if not as many as you possibly can. These photo slots are a great way for you to show every single inch and nook and cranny and possible little detail when it comes to your item. You should be including things like a modeled shot or something styling it. You could also do a flat lay, which offers different close-ups or angles. Every sort of point of view that you can come up with the image is is going to be crucial. Because people are shopping online, they wanna be able to see exactly what the product is gonna look like before they purchase it. And if you only have that one photo on there, they're not gonna be able to get a good idea of exactly what they're gonna get. So the more photos you can offer, the better. The third thing we need to be thinking about for our photos is our backgrounds and our styling of the actual product. Sometimes you'll come across photos that have a very distracting background. It might have other items in it, or it might be a very loud background 
background that kind of distracts away from the product. You really want the product to be the sole focus of the photo. So having a very clean and or simple background is a really great way to go if you want to really level up that product and make sure that people aren't getting confused and they know exactly what they're gonna get and that it looks professional. Quick budget tip here, if you are just getting started on Etsy, if you're not ready to maybe invest in a ton of money when it comes to this type of thing, I would honestly recommend just purchasing a plain white poster board from the dollar store. It does not have to be that difficult. You could set up your two poster boards like this and then set your product right here in the middle and shoot down into it. Or you could just have your one product laid down on the flat lay with a plain white background and then shoot from above. This is a very inexpensive way to get that very clean, fresh background look that really allows you to move your station and where you take your photos as well. Because a lot of times if you have a white table or something in your home that you wanna take your photos on, it might not always be in the best lighting or the best place. So that poster board allows you to move it to wherever you need to take it in order to get the best picture. Make sure that when you are setting up a flat lay or a photo product that you don't wanna to include too many excess items or props in the background as well. So if you are showing something that maybe needs a few different props to kind of go with it, that is completely okay but make sure that it is very clear what the product is and that the other props aren't going to be distracting it or taking away from the actual item. And then if you include something else in the photo that is not a part of the product you are selling, please make sure that you list in your description that that is not part of the sale so that people do not get confused. If you have a smaller product, I would actually recommend one of these really great photo boxes from Amazon. These are pretty inexpensive and they're a really great version of a budget-friendly studio Studio that you can use to put your product in there and have a really clean, bright, and crispy, high quality photo for your listings. I'm gonna link this guys for you up here in the corner as well as down below so you guys can go and check it out after this video. The next thing we need to be focusing in on when it comes to our photos is lighting. This is, dare I say, one of the most important aspects of getting a great photo. Because if you are in your room and it's dark and you're taking a picture on the floor and there's no natural lighting or any photo lights, you're going to get a product that is not well photographed and people aren't going to be able to see it for what it's worth and they're not going to want to shop and buy. So my number one tip, use natural lighting guys this literally means going and finding a big old window i'm literally sitting right in front of three like that's where all of my lighting is coming from right now go and sit in front of a giant window take that white piece of poster board put it down on the ground in front of a big old window and then take your photos next to it you're going to find that your photos are really well lit they're not going to have a lot of harsh shadows and it's just going to make your product look amazing if you're someone that can't take photos during the daytime or you're not home during the daytime to take photos by a natural light window I would also recommend some artificial lighting. I personally have two umbrella lights that do also help with my video photography and things like that. I purchased mine from Amazon. They're fantastic. They look like this. They're gonna be really great for allowing you to change the angle of your lighting, add additional lighting if the natural lighting is not enough, or allow you to shoot at a darker time or a later in the evening to allow you with a little bit more flexibility with your time. I'm gonna link these here for you guys as well as down below with the other items mentioned so that you guys can go and check them out. Just make sure that when you are using the artificial lighting and the studio boxes that you are being cautious of the shadows that can be caused through those. So when you're photographing an item, you might find that they have a little bit more shadow in them than you would with a natural light setting. So just make sure that you are changing up your angle and trying to find the best lighting possible for your item. Question of the day for you guys. Which one of these tips did you find the most helpful and you're going to start implementing for your Etsy listings. Let me know down below in the comment section. I'll be responding to all of your comments and I cannot wait to hear. If you guys are just getting started on Etsy and you need a little bit of additional help, I want to recommend to you guys that you sign up for my Etsy Beginners Master Course. I talk a lot about photography as well as the other aspects of Etsy businesses like your branding, actually getting your shop started, literally step-by-step -step tutorial, as well as a ton of other tips for marketing and so much more so that you can create a successful Etsy shop. It is my Etsy Beginners Master Course. I'm gonna be linking it for you guys up here in the corner of the video as well as down below if you want to go and sign up. Right here on the screen for you guys, I'm gonna link for you another video that I think you'll find helpful as well as an entire playlist full of other Etsy related tips and tricks. Down here, you're gonna find my subscribe button so you guys can stick around for more videos just like this one. I upload two times a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. And over here on this side, you're gonna find my Etsy Beginners Master Course if you wanna go and check that out and learn more about it. That's gonna bring us to the end of today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys.